everyone, it's Michelle Caruana from Play Cafe Academy and Profitable Play. And I have another very exciting guest expert interview for you today. Something that you guys have been telling me a lot on Instagram is that you want more insight into the actual design process of the indoor playground and particularly the play area. So again, you want more insight into the design process, how to decide which vendors to work with, what the custom design process looks like, and all that good stuff. So I'm really excited to bring you this conversation today with Dan from Tiger Play to give a lot of that insight here today. So if you're not familiar with Tiger Play, first of all, check them out. All of their information is linked in the video description along with my Instagram profile so you can request more topics and all of my additional courses and resources and all that good stuff. Everything is linked in the video description. But if you're not familiar with Tiger Play, they are one of the world premier manufacturers for indoor playground equipment. And I reached out to them for an interview because I think their designs are just so beautiful and I absolutely love their custom pieces. Every time I look at an indoor play space or I'm doing research and I see an absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful and functional play structure, I can pretty much always tell that it's Tiger Play. So they're based in the UK, but they work with businesses all over the world, from daycares and smaller nurseries to large-scale indoor playgrounds. So they really have pieces and a design process for every size business and almost every budget. So again, I'm really excited for you to hear this conversation with Dave. And if you want to reach out to their team with a custom design request or anything like that, again, all the information is linked in the video description. And if there's a topic, as I said, that you would like to request, please either comment or send me a message on Instagram. I want to create content that you guys want to listen to and you guys want to watch and see. So please let me know what I can cover on this channel for you. I want to help you move your business dreams forward. And I have a ton of exciting content planned, but I want to make sure that it's actually what you need. So send me a message and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video, especially if you're submitting a topic request, you're going to want to make sure you see if I cover it. All right, without further ado, this is my conversation with Dan, where we talk about the design process, choosing equipment, how to make sure everything is functional, how to start when you go to design your play space, all that good stuff. So let's hear from Dan from Tiger Play. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi there. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much. So um, for everyone kind of just tuning in, do you want to give us a little bit of a rundown on who you are and what you do in your business? Yeah, of course. So I'm Dan. I'm uh, the project manager here at Tiger Play. Um, we've been running around 20 years now, I think, uh, and we specialize in children's premium uh, play areas. So we cover pretty much all markets from a little corner in the doctor's surgery all the way up to, you know, huge play barns um, around. We're, we're based here in the UK, um, but we operate worldwide. So um, we literally uh, just got back from a couple of projects in, in Australia just before Christmas. So, um, yeah, we have a pretty wide scope these days. Um, my job is pretty much to take um, an initial inquiry and guide that um, company or individual right the way through from initial um, inquiry through to design um, and then project manage the manufacture and the installation of the play area. So yeah, I'm across, you know, quite a, a, a broad spectrum of the, um, of the design and build process. Awesome. So when somebody is in the planning process of their facility and they go ahead and they put through an inquiry form. What can they expect in terms of support from Tiger Play? What's kind of the process like? Yeah, so uh, like I say, so it, it will be um, either myself or another member of the sales team who receives that inquiry. Um, we have like a, a, a brochure which we send out, which generally talks um, uh, the client through our process um, and how we go about working. Um, and in the initial uh, stages, 
we like to either get on a Teams or, or go and see the client and just, just have a cup of coffee and talk through their ideas and kind of get a, a grasp of, of what they're looking to create, basically, yeah. So um, when you can't go and have a cup of coffee, so let's say it's somebody located in North America or maybe even in Australia, what's that process like and how does it differ a little bit? Yeah, so again, we, we would probably have a Teams meet um and you know lots of emails back and forth but we like to you know have um as much communication as possible in the initial stages and you know and i think it's really important to have that personal touch you know so we we make sure that we're on hand if the client has seen a potential building or they you know as you can imagine in the initial stages there's lots of ideas flying around so we like to make sure we're on hand as much as we can to take calls or emails as the client is, you know, putting the bedrock together of their business, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you guys do both custom design and then you have some kind of go-to pieces. So can you talk a little bit about what someone might go through in terms of choosing specific pieces that you might already have versus going through a complete custom design process? Yes. Yeah, so essentially, uh, the business is set into two um, two lines you can go down. We we have our design and consultation service, um, and that is billed separately to the manufacturer and installation. Um, and that design and consultation service basically takes you all the way through from in the, you know the outset of the design all the way through to a, a signed off design ready for manufacture. Um, and that generally is for the bespoke areas. Um, we also can offer, if a client particularly likes um, a previous area that we've done, then we can, you know, look to slightly tweak the colours or the, um, you know, the, like you say, the play features within that and provide much more of, um, you know, a, a kind of, it's easier to do it that way in the sense that we've already made that project. So it's, you know, when it's bespoke, we have to R and D the product and things like that. But if it's already been made, then it, it's a bit of a shortcut for the client to, um, to, you know, exactly see what they're getting because we'll, we'll have um, photographs of the finished product as well. Okay. Awesome. So if somebody wants something then completely custom, so they come to you with a very unique idea or a very unique style, you're still able to accommodate that, but it might just be a more intensive and obviously um, expensive project. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it would, it would be more expensive because essentially we're creating a whole new scheme. Yeah. So it's, you know, and, and to be honest, that's still um, our main body of work because we're generally seen as um, a bespoke outfit who, will will literally be up for tackling anything so to speak you know so we, we i think we're seen of as 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 the the company that someone would go to if they did have a one off idea that they wanted to create rather than um some other companies who who do specialize in painting by numbers maybe so to speak yeah yeah absolutely so um i know you mentioned that some clients will kind of look towards previous projects do you have any themes or, I guess, projects that are kind of like more popular than others or um, that you get a lot of requests for? Yes, I think uh, in kind of this day and age where, um, you know, outdoor space might be at a premium, we often get the, the kind of brief to bring the outdoors in, you know, so trying to make sure that we bring an area that's fresh and that maybe reflects elements of the outdoors, hence why we use, you know, lots of as natural materials as possible um, to, to, yeah, so bring the outdoors in. So, you know, lots of greens, lots of fresh organic materials to maybe whether it's the weather or if you're in the, you know, in um, the city centre where you want to create something which reflects you know, and nature, basically. So I guess, yeah, you could say that nature was quite a strong theme. Yeah. Awesome. So when you're talking to somebody who, let's say, wants a nature specific theme, and they want to incorporate different types of play, so maybe it's gross motor and sensory, what is the process like when it comes to your team recommending different pieces? And 
again, that overall design process? Yes, well, I think our designers always have that in mind. So they always have, um, you know, make sure that the area includes areas for the children to, you know, balance and jump and climb and, you know, explore an area with, you know, maybe different levels throughout or balance beams or slides or, you know, a particular climbing area, but also making sure that there's provision for the child to stop and focus on something, you know, so we would have activity panels um, dotted around the space, um, as well as maybe some sensory zones, so creating light and dark areas. So, you know, we always look to not necessarily tick boxes, but make sure that our areas do cater for all, you know, all of those um, different as aspects, which are so important to, you know, a child's development. And we, we, we really feel that we offer that within, you know, pretty much every space that we create. Awesome. So that is a great explanation of the different types of play. What about different ages? Do you guys have pieces that kind of accommodate the little crawling babies all the way up through, you know, adolescence? Yes, and, and we we think that that's really important. So we always make sure that we have, um, while not necessarily making it blindingly obvious, we make sure that we do have identifiable identifiable areas throughout the space. Whether it's you know a baby's area, then maybe a three to fives area, and then a five, six, seven, eight plus area, because. Um, especially I think with your younger ones, we, we really, in terms of the feedback we get, we really notice that, that mum and dad want to make sure that, you know, their babies have a separate space so that they're not going to be, um, you know, knocked about by older, maybe slightly more boisterous kids. Um, and in the babies areas, we look to create not simple areas, but if you think babies and crawlers, they're, they're just about lifting themselves up onto things. The, the texture is really key. So we make sure that there's lots of different textures within that area that the baby can explore. And maybe just a very simple um, trajectory in terms of a hump, as something just to clamber up onto and something with a very easy gradient down in terms of a slide. Um, I love that. That's yeah. awesome. Go ahead. Um, in terms of the three to fives, you know, we, you, you kind of have um, a little more um, uh, to you and you, you know you, you're kind of up on your feet and you, you're ready to explore an area but we still maybe would only incorporate that uh, maybe one level up because you, you're not maybe necessarily um, ready to go or you know three four levels up as at that age you just kind of want to take you know build up to that so to speak so again we might have some structure there some uh, climbing features as as well as uh, you know a, a, a slightly taller slide but again I think it's really important to at that age to provide some things on the wall for them to stop so you don't just have the kids hairing around you make sure that there's areas for them to to just be and kind of you know maybe a secret den you know kids love dens and again it's about that that kind of making sure there's lots of sight lines for mum and dad but also making sure that there's an area where they're going to be safe and maybe it is slightly darker to create that kind of den style and maybe some different lights, but also, like I said, some activities on the wall to make sure they stop and have a think about something else before they're, you know, off up the, um, off up on top of the structure or down the slide or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I love taking my kids to spaces that have no wasted space. And it feels like all of the wall space and everything like that is very yeah. intentional and that there are those hidden spaces. So I absolutely love that you pointed that out. So when you talk about those textures and materials and things like that, I know you guys have been placing a big priority on more eco-friendly materials and things like that. So can you talk a little bit about your company values at Tiger Play and kind of how that impacts the designs and materials that you recommend as a business? Yes, of course. I mean, part of it goes hand in hand with what the market wants. So, you know, that whole nature but kind of organic look, which, you know, the, has become quite a prominent part of our business, has been led by clients, you know, because they, they want to incorporate that kind of style into their space. So naturally, 
we moved away from you know the steel and the kind of heavy pvc materials and tried to look at some much more sustainable materials so naturally timber for our structures is, is a much more sustainable material than steel um, of course for kind of cleanliness purposes our materials still do to ha have still do have to have a, a pvc base for the majority of them um, but we look to use less PVC. Um, there's a particular product at the moment that we're trying to incorporate, which actually is a biodegradable fabric. Um, so, you know, it's just about making sure that in everything we do, we try and have much more of a conscience when it comes to the environment. And we're constantly looking for different materials that we can include um, that are gonna, one, be good for the environment, but also give the client a, a nice story for, for their business, you know, so that they can um, be safe in the knowledge that we've made every, um, we've, you know, we've, we've incorporated as much sustainable materials into their product as possible, essentially, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So kind of along those lines, if somebody was, you know, watching this right now and we're kind of, you know, they're planning their indoor playground, they're kind of deciding between different vendors. Do you have any advice for them and maybe just kind of explain why you would love to work with them at Tiger Play and how that could benefit them? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think the kind of three aspects of our business which set us out from the rest is that rather than maybe a um, more traditional steel frame that, that lots of people would know and, and relate to we like to make sure that our area um, reflects the rest of your building so if you you know if you have a brand and you have a color scheme and you have um, you know uh, you're using lots of different maple throughout the area then we look to make sure we tie that together so I think brand awareness is key and making sure that your brand flows throughout your place so you know we look to work really hard with you to make sure that all of your um, business, all of your um, space marries together rather than, you know, a lovely cafe area, but then a multicolored play area in the corner, which doesn't necessarily match what, what you've created in the cafe area for mum and dad. Um, I think sustainability is key. You know, our, I think um, even though we've already mentioned it, I think our look to use more environmentally friendly materials is something that we're really passionate about and is something that does set us out from the rest because you know lots of companies are still using um you know quite heavy plastics and uh, and and majority steel frames um and again i think it is the the bespoke nature of our work which is key and you know making sure that um, each client does have a bit of a USP and and something, uh, a play feature, which does set them out from the rest so that it's something where, and, and creating a space, looking at the overall space where mum and dad are gonna want to be as well, just as much as the kids. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of piggybacking off of that, um, can you think of any projects that you've worked on that are really unique or that really stood out to you that you kind of want to share? um yes there's, <laughs> there's a fair few um i know I it's not you know you don't have to say your favorite but just a couple that come to your mind that maybe had a unique mission or a unique vision for their play space or anything like that yeah i mean we we have created an area which is actually really close to where i am um down uh near bristol here uh in the uk and it has a really striking central kind of tree element um, and uh, again it's that kind of outside in nature but we used a huge canopy of um, a material called refelt which is made out of recycled plastic bottles and the whole kind of tree canopy is made up of different shades of this refelt and um, it, it one it looks great but it also has an acoustic element so you can imagine a, a big barn like this can get very loud but we've got a whole canopy there of acoustic panels, which also look like giant oversized leaves. So um, I think 
that kind of element of, of that project we were quite proud of because it looked really great, but it also had quite an important function. That's awesome. And it sounds like the kids probably love it too. Yeah, 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 it's gone, it's gone really well. So I think there's a capacity in that area for around 200 kids. So like, like I said, it can get pretty loud, but you know, the, the canopy helps to, to manage the sound. So yeah, I, I think that would probably be quite, be quite a, a unique project. Yeah. That's nice, especially because a lot of us are operating with those very high ceilings that create a mm. lot of noise yes. and echoes. Um, and it can be super overwhelming, especially for kids with sensory issues. So I love yes. that you guys take that into account in addition to, you know, just the visual aspect of the play area. Yes, yes, exactly. And I, I think especially these days when mum and dad might even be taking the kids, hoping that they might be able to do a bit of work while the kids are playing, you yes. know, so it helps to um, to to kind of provide maybe a slightly less loud, more work friendly environment for mum and dad as well. Yeah. So when you're helping clients choose play equipment, kind of to your point, do you take a different approach depending on the type of business, meaning if it's more of an environment where parents are kind of meant to relax and let their kids play versus an environment where parents are really encouraged to explore the space like right alongside their child is that a different approach for you um more and more they kind of run together so more and more now the the places have um it might next door have a co-working space you know so there's there's the opportunity to to get your work done with a coffee in the, the place next door and you can also go and explore the area you know with your kids to, when you're done so they, we they kind of Lots of the areas that we do cater for both, um, but yes, I, th I think both. I think both are really important. You know, I think you, you, naturally your kids want you sometimes to go in and, and explore an area with them, but also sometimes kids like to go off with their friends and explore themselves, don't they? So I think providing spaces for for both of those um, you know eventualities, I think, is key. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice to have the option as parents. I mm. <laughs> love that. And I love that, you know, depending on our mindset and our mood and who's with us, I love that I can take my kids to the same place and have a completely different experience. Exactly. At the same time, depending on how we approach it. So I think mm. that's a really great point. So when you're working with a new client that is looking to launch their first space, are there any common questions that you get or kind of things that you kind of have to help them overcome in the process? Yes, I mean, this, this might be probably more UK centric, but there is, um, there's kind of two, two types of areas you can have in the UK. And that's very much a, a slightly smaller space on the high street. And that has its advantages because you've got a lot of footfall, you've got a lot of people, you know, going to get groceries or pick up other things from shops within that that central environment um, but you can sometimes have issues with things like parking there because then it might not necessarily be an obvious place where you can park get the buggy out and walk to that premises um, and then the the kind of on the other hand you have the slightly more out of town area um, which more than likely will have good parking you know a large car park will have a, a, a bigger facility probably with more height so you can include you know higher structures um uh but it's not necessarily doesn't necessarily get that footfall so you know i think lots of clients come to us with maybe that question in mind and and that and they are all very sensitized to how key the area is you know do they go for a, a slightly larger area out of town maybe or do they look for somewhere in the center of town where they know they'll get the footfall, but it might be a you know a more expensive premises. So I think premises is key. Yeah, you know, just just identifying what kind of um, premises you want, but also does that premises match what you want to do within the space? So I think in the initial instance, clients will come to us with the premises in mind or a type of premises in mind and ask us whether they think that that's appropriate. So if somebody doesn't have, you know, a design type in mind, do you guys have somebody on your team or a system that kind of helps them determine their vision and kind of walks them through that process? 
Exactly. Yes. You know, and I, and I think we would probably ask them those questions. You know, we would say, you know, would do you think that your um, premises or, you know, where you are in the country would uh, you'd be better off in the centre of town? Or do you think, you know, a, a premises on the, the outskirts of town would be better? And we, we talk them through the pros and cons of both of those. And then I think we give them as much information as we can for them to make an informed decision based on where they are geographically and based on, you know, the initial ideas that they have for their business. Yeah. And then when it comes to like, let's say they have a space, if they already have a space in mind, but they have no idea when it comes to like the aesthetics or the internal feel, do you guys help with that as well? Yes, exactly. I mean, we we have before um, uh, and we still do offer a complete design service, you know, so we can design the servery, um, the the tables, the chairs, the, the whole space and essentially provide, you know, a turnkey service. Um, and I think I think more and more we, we kind of offer that because we are business is becoming so design led that people think, right, you know, Tiger Player offering a one stop service. So I might as well have everything designed with that by them again to make sure that it all marries together and it all tallies up. Um, and, and it does it does vary because sometimes, you know, people might not necessarily in the initial instance have an idea in mind, but the minute they go on Pinterest and they start a Pinterest board, then they very quickly kind of, you know, have 30 images that they'll send and think, right, I want to somehow bring all of these different elements together. So um, I guess it's quite rare that someone comes with, with no idea in their mind what they want to do. But so you can kind of look at somebody's Pinterest inspiration pictures and kind of help them bring that to life. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we encourage it. You know, I think Pinterest is a, is a great resource to get those ideas flowing and especially um, with the kind of when we talk about the bespoke nature, Pinterest is great because Pinterest is full of lots of kind of one off wild and wonderful uh, designs, isn't it? So, um, yes, I, I think Pinterest also helps our designers as well, you know, because it is a it's a good resource for for literally a window into all of the world's um, play design. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice to know that you guys offer the play equipment and you guys can also offer different aspects of the space, like furniture and things like that. I didn't know that. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, we have a team of joiners who, um, you know, complete our play structures and who, who are just as capable to produce, you know, serveries and bespoke changing tables and, you know, everything really. Yeah. So, yeah, we can provide the the whole scope so to speak yeah and I think cohesiveness is so important when it comes to designing a space especially if you have like that specific aesthetic in mind so to kind of wrap this up if somebody wanted to work with your business where would they be able to reach out yeah of course so um you can contact us through the website um and to be honest that's probably the best uh, way to get in touch um, we'll make sure that we get back to you within 24 hours um, and from there like I said you will uh, be contacted by myself or one of the sales team who will be able to help you literally uh, from the out all the way through to um, manufacture and installation you know all right awesome perfect thank you so much I really appreciate your time today no problem good to speak to you all right, that wraps up my conversation with Dan from Tiger Play. I hope you got a lot of insight into the design process and working with Tiger Play specifically. So again, if you want to see more of their custom designs or learn more about what it's like to work with their business and schedule an actual sales call and consultation, everything is linked in the video description. All right, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you have any topic requests, any comments, anything to add, please feel free to comment below or go to the video description and send me a link on Instagram. I absolutely love connecting with you there. All right, have a great day. I will see you soon.